Hey guys, it's me again after a pretty long hiatus. I decided to start reading the Bible and uploading uh, these readings, and then I'll just make commentary as I go along. And I haven't even done the upload of chapter 2 yet, but I wanted to make a comment on something you hear a lot about there being two different creation stories in Genesis. Um, starting in chapter 2, you get the, the seventh day, God ended his work and he rested. And then it goes on and it says, now these are the generations. Uh, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day. A lot of people read that as the beginning of a second creation story. I think that's crazy. Um, these chapter breaks that are in the Bible were added later. Chapter and verse was added primarily to help you find verses. It's not primarily a tool for interpretation. Uh, they, they put the breaks where they thought they made some sense, but they're not primarily there for interpretation. They certainly weren't there to indicate that this was a whole second creation story. If you put the conceptual break in at uh, chapter 2, verse 7, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, uh, and at 8, and, the Lord, and at 8, you begin chapter 2 conceptually. In other words, the end of the concept of creation stops at chapter 2, verse 7, and then the story of Adam and Eve begins at 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. So these last, you know, several verses, starting at about 4 and ending at about 7, are the wrap-up of the creation. They're not intended to be a whole new creation. They're saying, now these are the generations and how everything was before God had made it and before God had watered the ground and before God had gone and made a man. And then this last part is, and then God formed the man. That's day six. And then it goes to Eden. They're not going to talk about day seven because that's the rest day. Nothing happened that day. He rested. <laughs> there's, nothing, <laughs> there's no story to tell about that day. Just for example, we have David. Stories about David. There's Samuel, story about David. There's Chronicles, and there's Kings. All three address David. They don't put three different versions of David's story all crunched together, self blah, 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 and conflicting. The three different versions of one story. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four different versions of one story. So in the second chapter of Genesis, you get some details about day six, and then you get some details about going forward after day seven. So I just wanted to go over that really quickly. There's not two creation stories in Genesis. It's a ridiculous... You don't read something specifically to make nonsense out of it, okay? When somebody reads something, um, you read something, and then somebody makes it just sound crazy, even if this book was cobbled together out of multiple creation stories over the years, even if that were the case... The final editor wouldn't edit it together like that, without some kind of comment. <laughs> That's just stupid. That is a stupid interpretation. Let that one go. Let it go. There is one creation story. Whatever you think of the creation story, there is but one. Six days, seventh day rest, Garden of Eden, sin, ejection from Eden. That's, that's one story. It's not two stories. It's one story. Don't have to take my word for it, but you should. <laughs> See ya. Thanks again for watching Christian Labor. Please like, subscribe, comment, click on an ad, or donate from the banner of our YouTube homepage. Thank you very much.